Have you ever wondered why some children learn better than others? I definitely think about that a lot. <laughs> I just think, how can we get all children to learn? You know, to rise up to this expectation of what we want to pour into them. You know, some children have learning disabilities or, or just all kinds of hindrances that keep them from learning. And what could we do to level that playing field? This is something I really think about. I had to include this session in this year's conference. I wanted to make sure we talked about what the Bible says about the kinds of soil that we plant seeds in. Um, Yeshua told a parable that is included in three of the Gospels. It's in Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8. So I don't know if it's possible for you to have your finger in all three of those sections at once, but I went through those passages and tried to condense what was in all three of them because there were little nuances in each one that were a little different from the others. And I just wanted to think about how does the Father plant seeds in our hearts and how could we put that into homeschooling? We're going to start with Isaiah chapter 5 verse 2 because this is a picture of when Yehovah planted a vine. Okay, he says, well, I'll start in verse one. He says, now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. So regarding Yehovah and the vineyard he planted, my well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. Hmm. Did you notice that? It's, it's a fruitful hill. The ground is good. And he dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. So, when Yehovah plants something, he looks for a fruitful hill that's known for bringing forth a good crop. And then he plants, he, he digs up all the stones and the rocks that are there so that nothing will impede it. And he plants the choicest of seed, the choicest vine in it. That's the habit of Yehovah. When he plants a garden, he does it right. Um, so um, he, he basically, he makes sure that the seed is good, of course, it's the choicest vine, but he put a lot of thought into the soil that was there. And um, what is the soil for our children? Well, the soil for our children is their heart. It's the kind of reception that you're going to get. You can talk all day and present fantastic information to your children, but if their hearts aren't receiving it, it's not going to go anywhere. So I think as a gardener, it pays to spend a lot of time making sure the soil of our children's heart is good soil. It's much more important than the lessons in homeschooling that we're going to teach. So there are four kinds of soil that Yeshua mentions when he tells the parable. And I'm going to read this parable from Matthew 13, um, and then we'll reference the other chapters. So Matthew chapter 13, it says, Behold, a sower, or a gardener, went out to sow or plant his seeds. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, in these parables, Yeshua goes on to tell his disciples exactly what every part of it means. So I'm not having to make it up here. I can go straight to what Yeshua said and tell you what this means. But the first place, the first kind of soil is the wayside. The birds came and devoured the seed. Now, let's ask ourselves, what is the seed? Well, in here, Yeshua tells us the seed is the word of God. And in homeschooling, if you really want your plants, your children to produce, you're going to have to plant the word of God into them. But again, it doesn't matter if you plant the word of God in them all day long. You could be doing copy work and reciting scripture and reading the Bible and talking about the Bible. If the soil of their heart is not good, it won't produce fruit. So it's more important to pay attention to the, to the soil to make sure it's good than anything else. So the wayside, well, what kind of a place is the wayside? The wayside is where people walk. So it's a really hard ground. You're not gonna really be able to, it, it's like clayish. Um, it's like almost cementy in some places. It's so hard. How in the world are you gonna get that seed down in? So what happens is the birds come and they devour. 
Um, I find that this kind of heart for our children is a heart that just doesn't understand. It's never been dug up and anything been planted in it before and they don't understand. It says very clearly in here, it says in verse 19, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. So understanding what we teach is so important. It says in, in Luke chapter eight, a little bit later, that it was also trampled down under feet. Um, I find that this is a child that not only doesn't understand, but he, he's lonely. He's just stuck out there on the wayside. He has no mentoring, no help, no gardener, no one looking after him. Um, and, and notice it's Satan that comes and steals the seed. Sometimes Satan appears to be someone who cares about your child. Sometimes they feel like the people that they're watching on their little YouTube app care more about them than you do because you're not paying any attention to them. They are lonely and they're, they're, they're feeling like they're not cared for and loved. I think a child in this case who doesn't understand is a child whose parents are, don't, are too busy to take the time to explain things to them. They're like, just go away. I'm busy. I don't want to explain that. You should just know. And this is a child who Satan, they're right for Satan to come and, and to steal away the seed. A good gardener is someone who hushes the voice of Satan, gets those birds out of the garden, shoos them away, and then comes in with the tools and, and, and makes the soil much more ready to receive the seed, um, which means spending time with our children. So I think helping our children understand things is one of the most important things we can do. If you have a child that asks why all the time and drives you a little crazy, actually that's a great sign. Your child is trying to understand things. And a child who, who really thinks about things and understands, that's a sign of good soil. So you need to put away your busyness and spend time with your children and answering their questions and, and being willing to help them understand the concepts that you teach them. Now, the next kind of soil, it was called stony soil. There just wasn't much earth at all here. It wasn't that it was hard and packed down by feet and like alone and not tended after, but there's just no soil here at all. This is a rock. Um, and it says that it, when you plant a seed in this, that it will spring up quickly. There's no depth of earth. Um, this is like in the driveway. There's hardly any soil there, right? It's mostly a cement driveway, but in the cracks, you'll have a little plant that springs up. There's just a little tiny bit of growth there, um, but the sun is gonna come out and think how hot it is on that rocky hot place. Um, they, they're not gonna be able to put their root down very far and the sun is gonna come blazing hot and they're gonna wither away. Now it says in these passages that the sun is tribulation, hard things, persecution because of the word, um, these plants lack moisture. They're definitely not in a greenhouse. Although in a greenhouse, you can actually have a place where you lack moisture there too. You can get so hot in there, the sun can be so scorching and it kind of amplified by the greenhouse that they can get too hot and lack moisture there as well. Now I have a question. What is moisture? When we're thinking symbolically, what is moisture? Moisture is the word down in Ephesians 5 26 the water of the word is what husbands are supposed to give their wives um, children we need to make sure that even in a greenhouse that they get enough water we have to develop the habit of giving them the water of the word the word of God um, this is where it is so important that even though I said yeah the soil has to be good but we got to get a lot of water in there you can break up um, a rock with water you really can water is is so strong um, let me go to Proverbs 30 verses 7 through 9. It says, Two things I request of you, deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. And I think in this case, this little plant is saying, don't make it too rich. Don't give, make it too poor. Don't make the sun so bright overhead that I'm scorched. And don't feed me so much <laughs> that I'm that I'm like burnt by all the food that you're feeding me. I'm thinking plants here. We need to make sure that in the greenhouses of our homes that we are sheltering our children from some of the hot sun of this world. Um, that tribulation and stuff, when as it comes along, we need to give them a rich, rich soil underneath so that um, they will get sun sometime in life. There will be problems. I think there's a, something to be said for sheltering our children and for, for helping them along, giving them that love and nurture. 
Okay, the third kind of soil is the thorny soil. And in this soil, they're choked out. They have the cares of this world and deceitfulness of, of um, riches. Um, and it says they're unfruitful. So you can have a plant that's in the greenhouse and it can grow up but it just doesn't produce any fruit. And a lot of the time, that's because something is sucking the nutrients away from your plant and it doesn't have enough resources to bear fruit. Um, a lot of times this is a hidden problem. You, you don't notice it unless you're out there in the greenhouse. Um, you're wondering what is going on? Why, why is it having so much trouble? And then you look and maybe it's crowded out with all of these other weeds and things that are taking the resources from it. So some of the weeds that can happen, it says the weeds of riches, okay? The, uh, these weeds are called deceitfulness because riches to our kids look amazing. And sometimes when we're homeschooling, we think that the reason we're doing it is so they can get a great job and make a lot of money, but those riches are deceitful. Um, it says the desires for everything, for other things in Mark 4. And in Luke 8, it says the cares and riches and pleasures of life. I think sometimes um, this is where video games and spending a lot of time having fun, or we want everything about our kids' lives to be fun. And we don't want to go so we're stony and everything about our kids' life is hard and tribulation. We do want to give them a greenhouse, you know, that's rich and, and protective. But we also don't want to give them so much protection and fun that they never have to do hard things. Um, that everything is always about making life great, having lots of pleasures. And we need to make sure that, that those things don't suck out everything that we're trying to teach our children. I think sometimes of just how much I've had to reteach just because I allowed my child to watch a certain video or a movie and then they saw a bad attitude or a way of thinking that was contrary to the Bible and now I have to fix that. Um, it's size to suck out the nutrients that we are giving to our children. And the final kind of soil though is good soil. And this is soil um, that receives the seed that is planted in it. And I think we can tell a lot about our children by watching their attitude when we teach the word. If they would rather, um, you know, if they have that numb look on their face, they're that wayside soil. Like no one even cares about me. So why are you telling me about the Bible? That, that's not good. Or you could have the stony soil where there's just so many hard things going on in life right now that this is not a good time for teaching. You need to, to take some time to shelter and love that child and to give them some greenhouse environment instead of stony hard soil where the sun is bearing down on them. And then there's the soil that where all the voices that are speaking to our children. Sometimes when we take our kids out of public school, um, they have had so many thorns in their life that it's gonna take a little bit of weeding before we can really start to see an acceptance. Or maybe they just have so many pleasures, so much time on their devices, so many fun things and so many things that they are striving for that they're not thinking about the family unit. They're just thinking about their own pleasures and getting rich, um, that they are getting choked. But when we have nourished our soil and, and they, we see on their faces that they're receiving the word, um, you can just tell um, they receive it. There's just such a eagerness and sincerity about their faces. And when you see that, you know you've got good soil there. Um, this is a child that has learned maybe to listen to his parents. You can encourage this good soil very, very young. When you have little infants, um, encourage them to listen to you, speak in a way, make your face animated, you know, so that they learn to listen to your voice. Give them an, a loving, encouraging home, but also teach them to, to pay attention when you speak and to stop and to look at you, look you right in the eyes and see if they will pay attention to you. When you have a child that listens to you, they receive the word that you are planting, then you know that you have good soil. I really think this is the best way to tell. If you're teaching a lesson in math and your children are way off in dreamland or totally ignoring you or fiddling with this or that, you need to gather their attention back at you. Say, look me in the eyes, I'm speaking. And then use all of your resources, both scolding them and getting their attention that way, but, but also you know, being creative to think about what could you do to draw them in and entice them to learn. You want to keep working at that soil. This is one of the hardest jobs that a gardener has is to constantly keep the soil good. You can do it. Um, it does take creativity. Watch their eyes, watch their heart, watch their body language, and make sure that they are receiving the word that you plant in them, whatever those words are. 
I find it interesting that when a public school teacher starts their, and, and not everything that happens in a public school is bad, but when a, when a teacher starts a new school year, they spend a lot of the new school year developing routines and teaching the students how to listen to them. I think that we should take a lesson from that one little bit that when we start homeschooling, more important than the topics that we're teaching and the worksheets that we get through and the lessons that we cover, we need to spend a lot of time, especially at the beginning of every school year, developing our children's ability to listen. And setting up routines does help because that way our children know what's next. You know, going back to the stony soil, if they're only having tribulations all day, if every day is crazy, there's no rhyme or reason to your life, everything is just mayhem in your house, um, it's really hard for plants to grow in that environment. So set up some solid containers for your garden for your day. Um, set up those those beds and make the soil good. You know, lots of, of breaks between not always having to have school. You are homeschoolers. You don't have to do it for eight hours a day. A couple hours a day will be just fine. But set up some routines to kind of take some of the stress off of everybody and, and it helps them listen. Make sure that whatever you're doing, they're listening to you. Like obedience is what I've said in other sessions, but obedience is a way of knowing that they're receiving the words. When, when um, Yehovah says to Israel, Shema Israel, that means pay attention and listen with understanding pay attention to your children and make sure they are listening to you with understanding. I wish I could say this in a thousand times emphasis. If your children won't listen to you, you can't teach them anything. In a public school environment, they're going to work pretty hard to make sure those kids listen. They aren't going to be able to succeed very well either in every case because every child comes in with a different heart soil. Your children, your biggest responsibility to them is to maintain the soil of their heart and you'll know it's good soil when they receive with gladness the word that is planted in them. Um, Yeshua says, my sheep hear my voice. Uh, make sure that your children are your sheep. Make sure that they're listening to you primarily and nothing else. If they aren't, then drop all the lessons. Stop everything else. Make this your top priority beyond any other priority. Get that soil good. There's no point in wasting the seed and planting it in that soil until you know that the soil will receive what has been said out of your mouth. I'm finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing is it's okay, the last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say were 